show me. Hello everybody and welcome. This is a full build guide for the Zealot, focusing on close range gunplay with the Columnus, as well as maximizing the effectiveness of throwing knives to eliminate targets like gunners in quick succession while being immune to their fire. So if you're looking for a gun Zealot build, or you have an itch for some John Wick gameplay with a fair bit of Kill Bill Katana action on the side, this build will be great for you. If we're judging a build by the rule of cool, this one has it all. I didn't call it Gunfu for no reason. This is an anti-gunner frontliner build, focusing on always pushing forward. In addition to gunplay, and throwing knives, we use the Devil's Claw Sword for a lot of defense with the parry if we get caught by elites in close quarters, as well as using it for excellent horde clear with a lot of crit and cleave. While this wouldn't be the first build to use the Columnus, this build is specifically focused on using the gun and on using all bonuses from dodging enemies, which we consistently trigger with the help of Stripped Down. In this way, the playstyle of this build can feel more unique than other Zealot builds. The second part of this video is a full mission walkthrough on Auric Damnation with this build, if you want to see how it plays out in action and also get my thought process while playing. I carry the team that mission with some duo and solo sections and showcase how you can't really die if using the parry sword correctly. Grab your assault rifle and sharpen your throwing knives because we're diving right into the build. Initiating training program. Okay, with the Columnus 5 there's not much to say, all the modifiers here are important, even mobility, so you want to try and get a Columnus with as close to 380 as possible. If one of the modifiers is going to be a little lower, let it be stability or mobility. You want to look for a Columnus that has Dum Dum 3 or 4 and critical strike chance 4% or 5%. You have to get critical strike chance on the Columnus, after that you want more damage with critical damage, elite damage, flak and yielding sprint efficiency, helps you sprint for longer, but it's not necessary here. For your blessings there aren't any options. You want Strap down 4 and dumb dumb 3 or 4 if you can get. For the Devil's Claw, use Mark 4, get cleave targets and finesse first, then damage, cleave damage, and mobility last. For the perks, get critical strike chance and block efficiency. For your blessings, you want more cleave, so that'd be Savage Sweep, or ideally Wrath, which is better. Then you want Shred for more crit chance. I'm not going to explain exactly why we don't want more damage here, but rather take the crit chance. If you're unsure of this, ask me in the comment section and I'll give you an in-depth explanation. With the Devil's Claw, there's only one new breakpoint that we can create with more damage in perks which would be heavy attacks to the unarmored gunners, reducing their breakpoints from 3 hits on headshot to 2 hits. However, in my opinion, it's not necessary to build specifically for that, because A, we already hit that breakpoint if we have the damage bonuses from Duelist on dodge, B, if we do hit them in melee, it's usually in an AoE pattern, and C, the main way we deal with them anyways is by shooting them with a gun or using the throwing knives. Therefore, I recommend sticking with crit chance and block efficiency. For the Curiers, we take one Toughness Curio and two Health ones. On all of them, you want to have Damage Resistance to Gunners, Combat Ability Regen, and Sprint Efficiency. Let's go over the skill tree. Like I said, this build focuses on dodge bonuses as well as throwing knives. This is why, for example, we don't take restoring faith and emulation grenades. The focus of the build is ranged weapons, however, and so we do take the 25% extra damage here. Scourge gives us 30% more critical strike chance. It should be always up when attacking in melee. Enduring faith is just a permanent 50% toughness damage reduction. Second wind gives you toughness back whenever you dodge an attack. This is very strong. Dance of death is very decent when using the gun, especially when you consider that the Columnus has a lot of spread, this just makes your gun a lot more accurate. 25% damage reduction globally, again this is pretty much always on, very good. This gives you move speed when you get hit, but most importantly it gives you stun immunity to melee attacks. You might not think this is very strong, but in this build this is pretty necessary. Stun immunity on this node is important because normally when you're sprinting you have ranged attack immunity which means that gunners shooting at you can't hurt you. If I do exactly the same thing, but one of the small grunts hits me with a melee attack, you can see even though I have more than 50% stamina, my sprint gets broken and I take a ton of damage. You basically don't want this to ever happen to you and you want to be able to keep sprinting with ranged immunity even if you get hit in the back by a small grunt in melee. Shield of Contempt can negate a lot of damage situationally. We already have one shot protection with until death and this covers us defensively from both sides. Also with this build because you always try to run ahead and lead the charge for your team, most of the time you're the first to get hit and Shield of Contempt protects you. If you really want, instead of taking Shield of Contempt, you can spend the extra 2 points into getting the extra 10% attack 
speed. Attack speed is great, but a lot of the time with a sword we use the parry, which is reactive and doesn't benefit from the attack speed. Duelist is amazing. It gives you both added damage to weak spot damage and also added damage to critical strike multiplier. Each damage bonus by itself is additive, but they are multiplied by each other because that's how crit multiplier works when you crit. So if the true damage bonus on a weak spot would be, let's say, 30%, so 1.3, it would then be multiplied by, let's say, another 1.3, which would be equal to roughly 1.7 or 70% more damage. This is on a high finesse weapon, like the combat blade. For the Devil's Claw Sword, it would add up to roughly 60% more damage, and for the Columnus Gun, roughly 65% more damage. This is for weak spots that also crit. Body shots that crit would have an increase of 27% more damage. Remember that the damage bonus is only for crits, and assuming that the perk is active after a dodge. So for bosses, for example, it's not going to do much for you unless you're actively dodging them. We take two charges of Fury of the Faithful. This is extra crowd control. Melee critical hit reduces the cooldown of our ability. And the Keystone is a ton of crit chance. Okay, for the gun, we use the Columnus 5 Infantry Autogun, which has the fastest fire rate from all the autoguns. You can also ADS with it, and the special is a torch or flashlight, which is not very useful for us. If you use a Columnus, I recommend using a skin on it. You might think this is silly because it's only visual, but actually, it also changes the model and makes it longer. And because the gun is now longer, the pin when you ADS becomes smaller because it is farther away from you. This actually makes it easier to aim with when you ADS and has gameplay impact. Even without the extra crit chance, the Columnus has incredible DPS. It also scales really hard with headshots and crits. If you look at the damage distribution on the gun, you'll see that going from a body shot to a weak spot more than doubles your damage on most enemies. However, going from a weak spot to a crit weak spot, not so much. The Columnus, when fired in full auto, has a ton of spread. It's usually better to aim at the torso and not for headshots. Ogrins, however, have giant heads and if you're firing at, let's say, a Reaper, you do want to aim for the headshots. Now, the game has sort of a hidden mechanic relating to crit in automatic guns. When you fire a gun in full auto, if you get a crit, that crit is actually gonna chain to the next couple of shots in that volley. So with the Columnus fired in full auto, every crit you get actually guarantees four critical hits. This is dependent on the fire rate of the gun. So if I use a slower fire rate automatic gun, the number of critical hits being chained goes down from four to three and three to two, etc. This means basically that if you want crit chance, you also want the highest fire rate possible. The Columnus, however, has some limitations. First, compared to something like the Agrippina 8, it has lower stagger and lower suppression, so shooting most enemies is not going to interrupt them immediately. Second, the gun has limitations on its range, and like I mentioned, it has a lot of spread and the recoil is not great either, even while ADSing. This is why we always look to close the distance on enemies and shoot them point blank. Shooting enemies in medium to long range is often a waste of ammo. And with armored elites like Molars and Crushers, you want to save at least one charge of Fury of the Faithful to use it on them. With Fury active, the gun can really shred Crushers. Very briefly, the way Fury of the Faithful works is that if you don't spend it on a melee attack, while it's active for a few seconds, it downgrades Carapace Armor into Flak Armor and Flak Armor into Unarmored. So if you used in combination with the gun, shooting a Crusher is gonna treat it as though he has Flak Armor and not Carapace. Throwing knives. The knives replace your grenades and give you a quick throw. The knives have a large finesse bonus and do a lot of damage to headshots. They don't do a lot of damage to carapace armor, but they can still benefit from fury. So you can use this combo with the throwing knives if you want to quickly damage crushers instead of shooting them with a gun. Knives are treated like ammo and will be replenished with ammo boxes. You can also get them back by killing elite enemies and specialists with a melee weapon. The main difficulty of aiming the throwing knives is that A, they have a delay on the throwing, so you have to time the throw correctly and also that while they travel in a straightforward line, they do have a drop-off and you'll have to aim above the target at medium to long distances. I don't recommend using the throwing knives at that distance anyways, unless you're trying to complete a hit a sniper challenge. The throwing knives have enough cleave to go through a single basic enemy, but they will not cleave through elite enemies without bonuses. The main targets of using the throwing knives should be gunners, shotgunners, and some specialists. You don't want to waste them on unyielding ogrins as they don't do too much damage to them. Throwing knives are pretty good, at least damage-wise, against ragers. However, I wouldn't really recommend using that because while you use the quick throw, you cannot block. And also, when ragers are attacking you, they move their heads around too much. And a lot of your knives are just gonna miss. We also use the parry sword here, which is the best anti-rager weapon in the game. The quintessential throwing knife experience is that only one out of three of them actually hits where you want it to. Because of delay on throw, arc, hitbox, and enemy movement, as well as general game jank. With this build, however, we circumvent a lot of these issues by primarily using 
using the knives on gunners while they're unloading with a machine gun, which makes them a stationary target. We also get close to them for the ideal range to throw a knife, so this is pretty much the most optimized way of using the throwing knives and guaranteeing they don't miss. One thing about the throwing knives that most people will not know is that they inherit the powers of your equipped weapon. Perks like damage to flak or weak spot damage on your weapon will increase the knife's damage as well. Most blessings will also work with the throwing knives and this can create some interesting interactions. To try and very briefly summarize the best blessings and weapons that synergize with the knives, crush and roulette on guns like the revolver and headhunter autoguns will increase the crit chance of your knives as you empty the bullets in your magazine. Uncanny strike on the combat blade will apply rending to the knives. They will also keep the stacks up on hit. Cleave increases on melee weapons will apply to the knives. The base cleave of the knives is to hit two basic targets. With one or two cleave blessings on your weapon, the number of targets you can cleave goes up. For basic enemies, it's not the most useful, but what's interesting is that with cleave blessings, the knives can start cleaving through elite enemies like shotgunners, going through five or six of them with a single throw. Bonuses like Ghost, which gives ranged immunity, will also work with knives on hit, and Shattering Impact will apply brittleness to targets. The silliest interaction is using the Zorona with Surgical and Hand Cannon, which allows you to one-shot crushers with a single knife throw with the right bonuses. This seems like it would be busted, but remember that the revolver by itself can already do the same thing with two shots and a lot more ammo, so it's not like it's a huge improvement here. The best way to build around the throwing knives, if you want to optimize them, would probably be using the combat blade with Uncanny Strike for the rending, as the knives damage to crushers with it can truly be impressive. I didn't want to use the combat blade again in this build, however, so I'm using the Devil's Claw instead. With the throwing knives, all relevant enemies should go down to a single headshot and crushes to three with fury. And there's only one breakpoint to worry about with enemies, which is mutants that need around 5% more damage from whatever bonus to go down to two headshots instead of three. Like we went over, the skill tree gives us three bonuses from dodging, toughness regen, damage reduction, and more damage. You count as dodging when an attack is aimed at you, but you avoid it by an active dodge, slide, or having immunity. Sprinting with a gun that has stripped down will give you ranged immunity as though you are in a dodge state, as long as you're sprinting and have enough stamina. However, to get the dodge bonuses from it, you still have to time it as though you are dodging. Mind you, you don't have to actively dodge or slide, you can simply sprint for the dodge, but you still have to time the sprint in the same time frame window. So for example, you can use shotgunners for their easy audio cue. I want to time my sprint just right and I get the dodge bonuses with the extra damage, damage reduction and toughness simply by sprinting with no active dodge. The toughness region on dodge has a short internal cooldown, so you can't regen your entire toughness in one second. It will keep your toughness up though throughout the entire fight if you keep dodging. Like you see me doing here, I'm getting a ton of toughness back simply by tapping sprint with strip down. While you're charging with Fury of the Faithful, you also have iframes. This will not negate Trapper's nets completely, but will allow you to go through them in some situations as you're technically dodging while using Fury's charge. Using Fury to dodge will give you all the bonuses from a normal dodge. Using the iframes from Fury allows you to completely nullify Pox Burster's damage if you can't push them and need to take the hit. Just remember that charging directly into them will end your charge, so you want to charge away from them with Fury right before they blow up. Like I mentioned, you can get dodge bonuses from dodging any attack, ranged melee and grab attacks as well, even nets. However, avoiding the shots of reapers, gunners and snipers does not give you the dodge bonuses and does not regenerate your toughness. That is why on your curios I recommend taking damage against gunners. The main priority of this build is running at gunners directly and because we can't use the toughness regeneration when dodging their shots, damage reduction against them allows us to go head to head against them very safely. Because strip down only works when while sprinting, if you're shot from the front by gunners, shotgunners or reapers, they can change stagger you and prevent you from even getting into a sprint. That's why when sprinting at gunners, it's usually better to turn around for a second, start sprinting and only then sprint towards them. By now, this is something I do reflexively. To maintain your stamina while sprinting, if not actively being shot, you want to slide as much as needed. Slide maintains the same speed, but it doesn't deplete your stamina like sprinting. This is something you should get used to doing with every class, as sprinting with zero stamina will slow you down.
let's talk about the sword and parrying. The first question is, is the parry good? Well, is it good indeed? I used to think it was bad because if you fight a single enemy, the attack speed while waiting for the parry to trigger is very low. However, what I didn't realize was that there was no cooldown or animation limit on the parry, which means that you can just spam it and the more enemies that hit you, the faster you will counterattack. The parry is basically a normal block with a quick counterattack after. This means that even enemies that attack you from behind will trigger the parry counter. So I can use enemies attacking my back with the parry to hit enemies in front of me. The parry will block all melee attacks including crushers and molars overhead slams, irrelevant of their damage. If you get to zero stamina, the attack will still be blocked, but you will not perform a counter. You'll also get staggered for a second. You can also block all melee attacks from bosses or monstrosities, which allows you, for example, to solo kill a demon host. You'd still need to dodge their grab attacks though, and a beast of Nurgle will still eat you. Be aware that it's not possible to reach true damage immunity while spamming parry. So for example, if 10 enemies are attacking you at once, some of their attacks will still hit you through the parry window and you will take damage. This is a problem for psychers and veterans, but as zealots we don't really care about a little bit of chip damage. To optimize the parry, you'd want to build extra stamina and block efficiency on your gear. With this build, however, we don't do that because that's not the focus. I have another zealot build that does focus on that and I'll probably make another video about that soon. In this build, we have enough stamina to use in most situations. If you get low in stamina in melee combat, use fury with a couple of attacks to give yourself a second to regenerate some of it. With a sword, you want to use the Devil's Claw Mark IV. This is because it has the best attack pattern for light attacks, for Horde Clear. It also has the strike down on the first heavy attack. This means that by animation cancelling, it has the best single target damage of all the Devil's Claw's swords. With a horde, basically, you want to spam light attacks. If you have two charges of fury, just use one of them. This will make your first hit a crit and also give you extra attack speed. When attacking a large group of enemies, this will recharge the cooldown of fury almost immediately. Light attacks, however, do very little damage to flak armor. So for flak targets, you want to use heavy attacks. For single target, the attack pattern is using the heavy one with animation cancelling. Animation cancelling is usually done with the block, but with the devil's claw, it's better to animation cancel with the parry instead. If you get hit while the parry window is active, you'll also get an extra deflect attack in between your heavies. So use heavy one, animation cancel with the parry, and use heavy attack again. If you do it fast, it looks like this. If you're fighting more than just one flak armored enemy, let's say a group of gunners or shotgunners, you want to chain your heavy attacks, so the attack pattern would be heavy one, heavy two, heavy one, heavy two. You can parry crushers, but the Devil's Claw doesn't really do a ton of damage to them. With the Columnus, you do a ton of damage to crushers when Fury is active. And I recommend saving your Fury charges to use on crushers with the Columnus with a full magazine. One charge of Fury with the Columnus will usually down two or three crushers. With crushers, even though you can block all of their attacks with the sword's parry, blocking can actually lock you in place momentarily and this is very dangerous if there's more than one crusher. Therefore, if dealing with them in melee, you want to spam parry, but you also want to try and dodge their big overhead attack that can one-shot most people. This is fairly safe to do even if there are multiple crushers on you. With Reapers, remember the Columnus has low stagger and suppression, so with the gun, instead of trying to suppress them first, just shoot them to kill them fast. Ogres have big heads, so you want to aim for the headshots. The Columnus does upwards of 4000 DPS to Reapers. With Maulers, just like Crushers, you can parry all of their attacks, but again, this doesn't do a lot of damage. What you want to do again is shoot them in the torso. On Bulwarks, you can use the parry. If they're being annoying and blocking all your hits, you can also use the parry to divert the attack in a different direction, instead of at their shield if they're blocking. If the Bulwark is by itself, you can use heavy attacks on it. The best way to deal with them, however, is to dodge their first attack and shoot them with the Columnus when they provide an opening. With Gunners, like we said, get your stamina to 100, sprint at them directly, use throwing knives, and shoot them. You want to use throwing knives standing up for an easy aim, but when you shoot, you want to dodge and slide. With Ragers, you want to use the sword to parry their attacks and make them do damage to themselves with it. If there are multiple Ragers, however, and you're spamming parry, just be aware that you will take some damage. In a more realistic situation, where there are multiple Ragers and a bunch of small enemies, what you want to do is dodge in between parrying hits. Not only will this help you avoid some attacks, the dodge will also regenerate your toughness and give you damage reduction and more damage. If you do get hit and lose some of your toughness, immediately use Fury and a couple of light attacks. In this way, we should be able to deal with multiple enemies at once and take minimal damage.
specialists, with hounds, remember that with the Columnus gun, we have less stagger than something like the Agrippina 8, so staggering them in close range is not always guaranteed. Get ready to push them with the melee if they're right on you and finish them with heavy. You can also use a throwing knife on them if they're running right at you, just be sure to hit the headshot or it won't kill them. Being aware of the low stagger on the gun is also the same with trappers. Always be ready to dodge them when shooting. Trappers are also excellent targets to use the throwing knives on, and they're usually very easy to hit. Poxbursters, you want to shoot or use throwing knives on them. Again, with the knives, aim for the headshots. The rest of the basic specialists are pretty much the same, shoot them or use throwing knives. Remember that the columnus has pretty bad spread, so if you're shooting in medium range, use burst fire to control the recoil and spread. If the enemy is in long range, for example snipers, you can try to shoot them with burst fire but usually don't want to waste your ammo on them. Try to get close to them if you can. Remember that you can easily avoid snipers shots by sprinting. With mutants, let them charge at you and use heavy attacks, try to hit the headshots on them. If you really need to get rid of them quick, use throwing knives. If they're charging at you, hitting the headshots is pretty easy with the knives. You want to dodge back when you do this. With no extra damage modifiers from dodge bonuses or your weapons perks, two headshots on a mutant with throwing knives will leave them at around 2% health, so be aware of that breakpoint. Obviously you can also just shoot the mutants. Training program uploaded. We all know Ganfu now? Good. Now let me show it to you in action. The next section is an Orc Damnation mission walkthrough with this build. So if you want to see how I play this build and also get some great tips for playing on high difficulty, keep watching. Happy purging! Initiating advanced training. Alright, let's get into a mission. This is played on Auric Damnation with random people through matchmaking. Remember that with this build, we're immune to ranged attacks while sprinting with over 50% of our stamina. So throughout the mission, pay attention to stamina management, positioning, and how I engage different enemies like gunners and shotgunners when I lead the charge. I can't really say that my teammates this mission were amazing or anything, and it actually took them quite a while usually to catch up with me when I was pushing forward ahead of them. Still, the mission didn't feel like it was too difficult, even though at some point I was left solo when all of them died and I had to carry them by getting the res by myself. One thing I do wish we had however is a veteran with survivalist because using the columnus on zealot does take a decent amount of ammo. Just because you can use ammo and knives on gunners doesn't mean that you should. Sometimes it's easier to just use melee, save your ammo. It's humbling to see such Remember that with the melee if you're not parrying you want to use the heavy. Use heavy 1 for most enemies. Heavy 2 is for multiple flak enemies if you want to cleave. For horde clear you want to spam light attacks. One thing you probably want to get used to with the devil's claw is to parry a lot of the time instead of blocking. Parry is basically a normal block, the only benefit of blocking is that you can hold it for longer. Gunners will continue to attack you even when you get in melee range of them. That's why you'll see me trying to disable all of them at once before I'm committing to attacking them. Even a basic push will stop them from shooting you. I got hit by the sniper here. The hound however is more important. I don't really care that much about the damage because remember, we can regenerate the last 30% of our health back on a 90 second cooldown. This means that only the last 30% of your health really matters. Think of it as taking damage on a cooldown rather than having a health pool. Dying is not really a risk here, but one trapper can add it all, so be careful with positioning. Basically you always want to leave enough room for you to dodge if a trapper shows up. This is why I don't like the knives that much, except for stationary gunners. Hitting them on any other enemy is just unreliable, even on specialists. Poxbuster is one of the only enemies that teammates can actually grief you with. If you don't trust your teammates with positioning, be careful with them because your teammates can blow them up on you. In this map, enemies are gonna come from this door. This is especially dangerous because poxbursters often come through there. 
can also use this window to shoot enemies outside, but this is usually a veteran pew pew strategy, which I don't like. I prefer to just frontline, charge ahead and kill everything. However, you do want to use this choke point right here for a little bit at least. People are not used to seeing zealots with only two wounds playing on low life. That's why a lot of the time they'll leave you the heal in the Medicaid station. You want to communicate to them that you don't need it, they can heal themselves. I'm just playing around with this bulwark. Usually you want to just shoot them. This is actually very safe. The sniper can't actually hurt me as long as I'm sprinting. If you throw knives, you want to do it standing up. When you use the gun to actually shoot, however, you want to slide and dodge. Pay attention to how much toughness I'm regenerating here passively just by dodging around. Crushers are not that scary. I can parry them with a the devil's claw. The Columnus with Fury is very effective against Crushers. Just make sure when you use it to have a full clip on your gun. I actually prefer the Ragers to attack me here because I can use their attacks to parry them and damage them back. If you see two pox bursters back to back, be very careful. The one in the back can trigger the one in the front and blow you up. You want to push both of them back at the same time. Like I mentioned in the guide, Fury of the Faithful gives you iframes. I use it here to make sure that I dodge the sniper. Keep in mind that you're not a veteran, so ammo is still a thing here. That's why you always want to shoot enemies at point blank, making sure that all your bullets hit. Like I mentioned, when engaging multiple flak enemies in melee, you want to use heavy 1, heavy 2. Prioritize disabling specialists before elites. This hound can do a lot more damage than a couple of ragers. You actually don't want to use parry when sliding because it delays a little bit your ability to continue sprinting again. See what I mean about the spread with this gun? If you blow her barrel, make sure to ping it first for your teammates. I want to make sure I have full stamina here before pushing. Be careful of draining your stamina as well with pushes if you need for the ranged immunity with strip down. I know it can be a little gimmicky, but using the throwing knives like this is a great use of the knives and clearing out these gunners really helps the team. Also, to me at least, this is very, very fun.
glamours are annoying, but again, hounds are a much more dangerous target here. You need to focus on disabling them first. You can actually parry all the crusher's attack with a sword. This is not necessarily a parry focused build however, and to not get stun locked, you should dodge the overhead attack of the crusher's even when parrying. We have our scripted duo section right here. Doubles the gameplay for the content. Scripted solo section carry content coming up in a minute. It's actually a lot easier if we have a veteran that has survivalist. I'm really starving in ammo here, especially with this mission type. Right here is a great example of why you want gunner damage reduction on your curios. Remember what I said about double bursters? See how I get knocked back by the explosion but take no damage? This is because again, while charging, Fury gives you iframes. If you're throwing knives on mutants, you want to dodge backwards while doing it. My fellow sister of faith here has pretty bad positioning. You want to not let the specialists come to you. I really don't like using that much ammo to try and save them. Try to go ham if until death triggers. You want to try and get your health back. Remember you can always vault. The game is really not that dangerous if you block and move away. You just want to reposition in this situation. Again, force the specialists to come to you. This is no different than the old World of Warcraft tank play, where you taunt all enemies, then LOS them to force them all to group up. Most specialists are very weak in melee range. Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't know if it's talked about enough, but from my experience, most people really don't utilize the uh, ping system enough. Even without ammo in your gun, you can still use it for the strip down ranged immunity while sprinting. You want to put a red skull on demon hosts. This frees up your tag for other units. I should have tagged that barrel, that was my bad. It looked like I stunned the mutant with my ability, but I actually just hit the wall. Mutants cannot be staggered. I did, however, use it to get the iframes to dodge his grab. The sword doesn't do a lot of damage to molars. I don't have a lot of options, however, because I'm short on ammo. Trappers are not that scary if they shot their net and now they need to reload. You don't want to just let them get away though. The situation is not as scary as it looks. Lead enemies to a place where you have an opening while blocking. Use fury for the extra impact, then push your way out and reposition to a place where you can dodge incoming trappers. The main problem here is actually not the crusher and the mauler, but the bulwarks. I can parry a lot of attacks and do a lot of damage with the counterattacks, but not if the two shields keep blocking everything I do. I want to use the Colonus to get rid of the crushers here. I want to make sure, however, that the shield is not in the way. Oh, 
to gather my thoughts. Bless you, bless you. Again, don't bother with snipers at long range. You'd hardly be able to hit them with a gun and it's a waste of ammo. It's good to get in the habit of dodging whenever you hear the trapper's net or a hound pouncing. There's no real reason not to dodge when you hear it, and it can save you once in a while if you don't see the specialist coming. It's not a bad play to camp the door for a second if you hear a specialist coming. Like I said, Specialists like trappers are very easy to engage in melee range. You just have to stagger them with a push or a heavy attack. the right way to engage with bulwarks you want to bait their attack and when they provide an opening shoot them. Problem is that the hitbox of the shield is one of the most annoying things in the game right now. In fact bulwarks are so annoying right now to deal with that I usually just let them follow me and hope that another teammate finishes them off. The reason I'm pushing here is because I'm trying to get through the crowd to get in a better position. I don't really care about the damage here, but I should have used Fury to dodge the burster. I'm pretty sure the best place to fight in this arena is up here on this platform. Investigate. Redress. 
usually want to push hounds before you attack them. This immediately disables them. Not much I can do against the gunner in this range. I don't want to waste ammo. If you do shoot enemies that are far away, use burst fire. You do want to get close if you can though. The Colonus has low stagger in comparison to something like the Agrippina 8 braced gun. So if you're shooting trappers and hounds in close range, be careful, they can still get you. This is why you save the heal on the Medicaid station, unless you're on your last wound. You generally want to finish the arena first, then heal. If you really need to heal, however, and you don't trust your teammates, because you're afraid one of them is gonna heal twice, you can sometimes take the heal first thing. generally better to ADS with the columnus instead of using the hipfire. Obviously hipfire is going to be better for running and gunning, but with strip down on the gun, you want to get close, then shoot anyways. Enemies can spawn behind you in this area, be very careful when going down. You can sometimes get surrounded here. If a bomber throws a firebomb or a fire barrel blows up, it's usually good to look down to see where the area ends. Sometimes firebombs spread in unexpected ways. When fighting a monstrosity, at least one player in the team should stay back and deal with specialists that come from the flank. There's too much visual clutter and you can't see anything. You want to spam tag to see enemies through all the effects. If 
If a trapper shot her net, she's gonna stand over the trapped person for a second. In this situation, you usually wanna release the net first, which has a very short channeling time, and then finish off the trapper. In this section of the map, you have to carry three different power cells. I like to tag where to go next, go in a circle from right to left. This allows you to finish the objective very quickly if you just rush it. Unfortunately, a lot of the time the teammates don't follow and they get caught up, surrounded and go down, which forces you to try and go back and help them. Ideally, you want someone else to press the button, then immediately get the power cell and move right. Go up the staircase to the right, then continue forward, moving up the staircase again. You want to change slide instead of sprinting when carrying. This allows you to retain your stamina. If an enemy closes the distance on you, you can push them, which is why you always want to have some stamina left. When you're at the top, tag the following staircase, then go down. I'll usually just rush the objective here, even if I have to do it solo. My teammates seem to be struggling a little bit here, however, and I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to reposition here to close in on the flamer without taking any damage. I'm using the parry here to turn other enemies' attacks against the flamer. This surely shouldn't be this hard. Someone should be grabbing the cell and just getting it in place. When you get the third cell, drop down, hit the button, wait for the door to open. If you have ammo crates and medipacks, drop them here now. Ragers don't always aggro to the person closest to them. If you want them to attack you so that you can use the parry on them with a sword, you usually need to hit them first before they get aggro to you. Well, that's it. Ganfu Zealot. This build is a lot of fun and offers a fairly unique playstyle for the Zealot. This is one of my favorite builds and I hope you can enjoy it as well. Now go purge some heretics.